Hello, I'm Eduardo Gonzalez from the Climate Group. Welcome back to Climate TV. Today we're going to be looking at what state and regional governments are doing to promote low carbon economic growth. With me to discuss this is Libby Ferguson, the States and Regions Director at the Climate Group. States and regional governments are sometimes referred to as the unsung heroes of the climate movement. Why is that? Um, I think in the climate change world, you see a lot of action happening at the national government level and a lot of focus on nations as they're deeply involved in the international climate negotiations. We're also seeing um, a lot of increased attention on what's happening at the city level. But there's this important level of government in between that plays a very vital linking role. And what we're seeing um, through our work with the States and Regions Alliance, um, which is a network of 31 governments taking ambitious action on, on climate and working together on that, is that these governments are, have the legislative capacity to do huge things and have huge impacts. But that attention isn't always brought to this level. So there's, they've got lots of models that could be shared, but we're not actually focusing enough on, on these policy models and not realising the benefits of them. Um, there's been some major activity recently in relation to a number of summits, particularly in Lyon and uh, Toronto, uh, involving subnational governments. Now, what actually happened there? So the summits in Lyon and Toronto happened six months before the, the climate negotiations in, in Paris. And it was a really important moment, as you say, for bringing city, state and regional governments together to do two things. One, show the huge amount of action and ambition that's taking place at this level of government. And two, provide the national governments and the international process with the confidence that they need that there is this momentum and level of support be behind them. What we saw at those summits was that with the Compact of States and Regions, we saw 20 governments already bringing forward their climate commitments. And these 20 governments represent over $8 trillion um, in GDP. And what we've seen since these summits is that we've got double that amount of governments coming forward with climate commitments. So we're seeing that this is just the start of the momentum building and that these two summits mark the, the start of that. So what exactly is the role of subnational governments in relation to the intergovernmental process uh, around climate? Subnational governments don't have a formal role within the, the international process. However, they are major stakeholders in, in the outcomes and the decisions that are made at that level. So what we're doing at the Climate Group is working with these governments to do two things. One is highlight the ambition and the action that's taking place at that level. But two is really helping the international process and national governments un better understand the level of action that's taking place below the national government level. And our hope is, is that in the longer term, the state and regional governments and also city governments can really contribute their knowledge and expertise. What we're doing at the Climate Group is, is working with state and regional governments and working with partners at the city level to help build knowledge and understanding of, of the action and momentum that's taking place. Uh, we're expecting some major announcements from subnational governments at the Paris Climate Conference uh, in the form of something called the Compact of States and Regions. Can you tell us what that is and how important it is? So the Compact of States and Regions is a really exciting initiative that, that we launched last year at the UN Climate Summit. And it's a commitment by governments to set an emissions reduction target but also, and most importantly, to report against that target on an annual basis. And the, the main outcomes that we hope to see from this is one, really building that database of knowledge and information about what is happening at this level of government, which will really help support governments at the national level and the city level to understand where, where the action is taking place. Secondly, we hope to really use this data to give confidence to national governments to do more. 
But thirdly, and most importantly in my view, this is just the start. So what we're doing and what we're seeing is as we put this data out, more and more state and regional governments are giving us information about what they're doing in their jurisdictions and also being encouraged to do that little bit more. There's all sorts of different acronyms and uh, initiatives around the uh, climate negotiations. Um, and there's one, I think, called the NASCAR uh, portal. Now, what exactly is that and how does it relate to the compact of states and regions? The role of the NASCAR platform is to bring all this information together in one place. So the data collected by the Compact of States and Regions will feed into Nazca. There'll also be data collected by city governments through the Compact of Mayors that feeds into that platform, but also a broader, um, a broader database of what's happening with businesses, what's happening within the investment community. So again, Nazca will, will provide that platform so that we can see all of the action taking place across all non-state actors as they're, as they're termed, and really help to gain a clearer picture of, of what, what is really happening on, on driving low carbon economies around the world below the national level. Another interesting development has been uh, this cap and trade system between the governments of uh, California and Quebec. Um, talk us through it. And also, do you think this is something that can be extended elsewhere? So this is, I think, one of the really exciting initiatives that, that demonstrate where action and policy setting by state and regional governments can have huge impacts and also can drive um, policy setting at, at a national level as well. So Quebec and California individually decided to, to put a carbon pricing system in place within their own jurisdictions. But the exciting movement here is that they've agreed to collaborate and link these systems, not just across state and regional boundaries, but also across international boundaries. So together, they have now created the largest carbon market in North America. Um, this has given extra stability to their individual markets, and it's also um, helping to expand that market further across North America. So we've seen Ontario showing interest in, in joining that market and a number of other states and provinces also exploring the opportunity. Um, secondly, I think this, this model does not only set an example for national governments, but California is also working to, to share learning with Chinese provinces. And so there's learning beyond the North American context that, that, can, be, that can be shared and, and promoted. Climate Week NYC is coming up soon. Uh, it's always an important moment for policymakers and businesses. Um, why is it such an important event for subnational governments too? And what can we expect to see this year? In the North American context, it's really the state governments in the US, the provincial governments in, in Canada, that have the, the key legislative, um, legislative authority to, to make the policy decisions that really impact on climate. So they are responsible for transport, they're responsible for energy policy, they're responsible for buildings and energy efficiency. So a broad remit of policies that are, that are vital in driving um, low carbon economies. Um, in addition to that, they also play a crucial role in setting the right policy signals for business to have the confidence to make the decisions that they need to make. So Climate Week provides the opportunity for these businesses and for these key policy makers from state and provincial governments to come together to discuss, to debate, but most importantly, to, to set the agenda for, for driving low carbon transition um, beyond beyond Paris. Thank you, Libby. That was Libby Ferguson, the States and Regions Director at the Climate Group, talking about the crucial role of state and regional governments in building a strong low carbon economy. That's all from us here today at Climate TV. Join us again soon. Thank you.